Hi, this is Sean D'Souza, and you're listening to the Three Month Vacation Podcast. This podcast isn't some magic trick about how to work less. Instead, it's about how to really enjoy the work that you do and to enjoy your vacation time. Hi, I'm Sean D'Souza, and you're listening to the Three Month Vacation. Every year, 20 billion bottles of wine are produced, and 80% of those bottles are closed with a single substance, a substance called cork. The cork, as you would suspect, comes from the bark of the cork tree. The bark has to be harvested, and then you get the cork for those 16 billion bottles. But there is no hurrying the process. That's how cork works. A tree must be at least 25 years old before the bark can be harvested. After that, it can be stripped of the bark every nine years. Even so, the first stripping is totally unsuitable for wine and is used only for industrial purposes. The second stripping still lacks the quality needed. It may take well over 40 years before the cork is considered good enough to be put in a wine bottle. As you can see, a cork tree can't be rushed. Good headlines too need a little time. But in today's world, we need our headlines for our newsletters, podcast titles, webinars, and our workshops. Is it really possible to turn out a great headline almost immediately? Or do we have to wait? What we'll cover in this podcast is the concept of headlines in a hurry. We'll learn three ways to write great headlines and to write them under pressure. But we'll have fun. And instead of just learning three ways, we'll go back to grammar class. So what are the three ways we'll cover? The first is how to use and in your headlines. The second is about even And the third is about without. Yes, we're talking about conjunctions and prepositions and all the stuff that you didn't really like in grammar class. So let's get this show on the road, shall we? Remember Windows 3.1? I sure do. I was a cartoonist still living in Mumbai, India at the time. And that's when I got my first computer. It was a 386 and top of the line with programs such as CorelDRAW and Photoshop. Right before I got the computer, I would go through the tedious task of drawing a cartoon, photocopying it several times, and then coloring each version. Clients wanted to see the same cartoon rendered in different colors, and so I'd spend trips back and forth to the photocopy shop. But it also wasted a lot of my day. Then along came Windows 3.1, and I was able to scan and to color my cartoons in under half an hour. From paper to the computer was my big leap forward when it came to cartoons. And yet, several years later, when I moved over from cartoons to copywriting, I struggled a lot with writing headlines. Every time I sat down to write headlines, I'd get the blue screen of death in my brain. Until the day I figured out the incredible power of AND in moving a headline forward. When writing a headline, all you have to do is add the conjunction AND, and your headline seems to dart forward. Let's take a few examples, shall we? So example number one is how to raise your freelance rates. And then we'll put and in it. How to raise your freelance rates and get a greater number of clients. Example number two, how to create magic with your brand stories. 
Now we're going to put and in it. How to create magic with your brand stories and engage new readers every time you publish. And the final example, how to keep fit over the age of 55. And now we put and in it. How to keep fit over the age of 55 and still eat everything you want. What did we notice with these and headlines? The first was the sheer simplicity of the headline. We start the headline as if it's going to be a really short one, like how to raise your freelance rates. Then, as an afterthought, we add the end. What this tends to do is give your headlines more oomph. The first part of the headline without the end is good enough, yet the second part allows your headline to move the client forward. Which is why the end headline has a far greater curiosity factor than the headline without this end conjunction. When writing end headlines, I use the parenthesis or the M dash. Now the M dash is the long dash. It's used when you seem to be breaking a thought mid flow. It seems like you've already finished with the thought. For example, how to create magic with your brand stories. Then suddenly the M dash shows up out of nowhere, talking about new readers. So what it's done is it's brought in a new thought, a much richer thought. Now your headline reads as how to create magic with your brand stories, M dash, and engage new readers. So what you're doing is you're adding that little bit and you're using either the parenthesis or the M dash. But you don't always have to use the M dash. You can just use the parenthesis instead. The parenthesis does something similar to the M dash. It creates a continuation of the thought and the client feels a greater tug towards the end type of headline. Visually too, the headline is more arresting. When you look at the headline side by side or even in your inbox, the second headline seems to say a lot more. But because there is the M dash or the parenthesis, it's like you're getting some breathing space as the reader. If you wondered why you had to sit in boring grammar class, well, now you know. You're in headline grammar class and you just found out how to use and, m dashes and parentheses to good effect. Like Windows 3.1, blessed soul. It got me from a bit of struggle to super fast execution and you too can build a headline in next to no time by using the and. But is there a way to use the AND type of headline successfully? Sure, there is. And the best way to use the AND headline is to write the first part. For example, how to write irresistible calls to action. Then you walk away. So your headline is already really good, but when you come back several hours later, your brain will have something to add to that headline. So your headline will read like this. How to write irresistible calls to action and increase CTR by 30%. The space between writing the first and second part of the headline isn't necessary, but it does make for better headlines. Keeping a break between your activities helps your brain to hum in the background and to come up with a far superior idea than if you simply jumped on the first possible idea that comes to your head. Okay, first part of the grammar class is done. Let's go to adverb land, the land of even. I'd never heard of the comedian called Michael Jr. Then one day, I'm lying on the sofa, scrolling through Facebook, and this video pops up. In the video, Michael Jr. is talking about how comedy works. And here's what he says. I want to explain to you how comedy works. Some comedians know this, a lot of them don't. They just do it because they don't know what's going on. I feel like God has given me the math on how comedy works. I want to share with you. This is how it works. First, there's a setup, and then there's a punchline. 
Let me explain. The setup is when a comedian uses his talents and resources to seize any opportunity to ensure that his audience is moving in the same direction. The punchline occurs when he alters that direction in such a way that was not anticipated by the audience. When you catch on to this change, you have received the punchline. The results are revelation, fulfillment, and joy expressed through laughter. I just thought I'd share that with you so you can enjoy these jokes on another level. <laughs> He's talking about the adverb. Yep, Michael Jr. doesn't know it, but he's given you a quick grammar lesson. And that's precisely the grammar lesson you can use in your headlines by using the adverb even. When you use even in your headline, you're doing just what Michael Jr. is talking about. You're taking the audience in a specific direction and then moving them to the punchline, which isn't quite anticipated by the audience. Ha! You're eager for grammar lesson number two, aren't you? Well, here goes. We we'll start off with a few headlines. So the first headline is how to rank high on Bing. And we'll put even into that and we'll say how to rank high on Bing even with low Google rankings. Second example, why you should raise your freelance rates. And then we'll put some even in it. Why you should raise your freelance rates even if you're not sure you're worth it. Third example, how to quit your day job. Even, how to quit your day job even if you're cash strapped. We'll do a fourth one, okay. How to travel first class. How to travel first class even if you're dead broke. See that setup in the punchline? It's everywhere you know this setup and punchline. When you read the brain audit, you will have the concept of the problem and the solution. That is a setup and punchline. When you look at nature, you'll notice a branch, and then you'll notice the twig. A snowflake has the same setup and punchline. There is the bit, and then the little bit sticking out of it. And of course, when we go to headline land, the adverb even creates a powerful punchline. It brings out that extra bit of information that you're simply not expecting. And in doing so, it gets and it keeps your attention. Just like the end, it helps to use the parenthesis or the M dash when you're writing these headlines. And just like the end, there's no rule, at least not that I know of, whether you use the M dash or the parenthesis. Just be sure to use it because it creates that setup and punchline both visually and intellectually. Visually, when you look at that headline, you can see there's a separation, but intellectually, it's that extra bit that's showing up. And you aren't expecting that. You aren't particularly expecting the headline to go in such a weird direction, were you? So remember, set up, punchline. That's the power of even. We've covered and and even. Should we go to the next grammar lesson? Let's head to without which happens to masquerade as a preposition, adverb, and conjunction. Even if you can't remember where it sits in the grammar hierarchy, without does a pretty cool job when you're tired of using and and even. And let's find out how. Write a headline with without, all you have to consider is the opposite. And you can do this with random headlines. So let's take an example. How to raise your prices. How to raise your prices without losing clients. Or how to raise your prices without increasing the quantity of product. Or how to raise your prices without considering the competition. Or how to raise your prices without the accompanying fear factor. 
When you write a without headline, guess what you're really doing? Yep, you're bringing up the objection in your head. Notice the second part of the headlines? They brought out the fear of losing clients, of needing to increase the quantity of the product, the fear of competition, and yes, the fear of fear itself. All of these are obvious objections to your premise or your article. So what's a grammar headline writer to do? Well, it's perfectly simple. All you really need to do is write some sort of headline and then think of all the reasons why it's not a good idea. Or at least why you'd have some objections to that idea. Let's take an overly simple headline like how to lose weight in two weeks. What are the objections to losing weight? Maybe you're a foodie. Maybe you don't want to go on a crazy diet. Maybe you don't care about exercise. And then you slap these objections on to the first part of the headline. So you wrote your first part of the headline. Now let's go to the second part. So how to lose weight in two weeks without giving up your foodie habits. How to lose weight in two weeks without going on a crazy diet. How to lose weight in two weeks without needing to exercise endlessly. And there you have it, without comes to the rescue. Isn't grammar wonderful? We should really do a summary, but what would we cover? We already know the three methods to make our headline stand out. And all it takes is just three parts of the grammar universe. And, even, and without. And gets your headline moving boldly forward. Even does this little setup and punchline trick where people are not expecting it to appear. And without is all about objections. You dream up the objection, slap it on the second part of the headline, and you're ready to go. See? Those grammar Nazis were right. You should pay attention to your grammar, because even if your brain feels like it's running on Windows 3.1, you'll still be able to turn out super curious headlines. So what's the one thing that we can implement today? Remember the advice you got about writing part of the headline first and then going away? Well, here's a reminder. You may get so excited at your proficiency at grammar class that you may forget to take that break. Leaving the task unfinished ensures that your brain brings up and rejects many options. Eventually, when you go back to your headline, you're likely to get a far superior headline than the first one you happen to think of. So put space between all your activities. This article was written over a period of three days. The outline on one day, part of the article on another, and finally, the article was completed on the third day. And only after these three days did it go for an edit. A headline might seem almost puny when compared with an article, but Letting the brain relax helps you get a far superior output. And that's pretty much it. Grammar lesson is over. School's out. So what's happening in Psychotactics land? All this talk about cork and wine bottles. Guess what? It's my birthday today. And yes, I was at work at 4 a.m. as usual. So I'm going to have a pretty good day. We're going to go out, which is not a lot different from many other days, but we're going to go out and spend the day and not going to take anything. Just going to sit down, have some coffee, enjoy myself. So that's what's happening today. What's happening on the podcast front Last month, we went to We Are Podcast, and there was one of the speakers, and she spoke about Facebook groups. And ever since that point, I've been thinking about starting a Facebook group. And Renuka is going, no, we have 5000 BC. We don't need a Facebook group. And I'm going, we need a Facebook group. Well, yesterday, we killed the Facebook group. It didn't start, but we killed it. But all this discussion and we have to go through this in our business. We have to decide what we don't want to do. 
rather than what we have to do. And everyone seems to scramble in every direction. And so do we. We think about it. We talk about it. We debate about it quite a lot. And then we kill it. Not everything gets killed, but the point is that you need to have just two or three things that you can do in a year. And if you don't have the energy, then you're not doing yourself any favors and you're not doing your client any favors. So we killed the Facebook group before it started. On another note, I have discovered Charles Passy. That's C-H-A-R-L-E-S, which is Charles, and P-A-S-I. And if you like music, or if you like the music that I like, then you're going to love this stuff. This is just awesome. I downloaded two of his albums. That's Charles P-A-S-I. Try it. I think you'll like it. It's really cool music. He's a great entertainer. I'm surprised I haven't heard of him. I'm surprised you haven't heard of him. So that's the music that's happening, especially on the birthday. And that brings us to what's happening in terms of courses. Well, the first 50 words, how do you start your article? Most people struggle with this so much. How do you start your article and keep your client's attention? It's called the first 50 words of your article, of your presentation, of your webinar. Instead of saying, good morning, it's so nice to be here, or struggling for ages with your article, the first 50 words helps you. So the booking starts on 10th December. You have to put your date down. Make sure that you're on the psychotactics list, but 10th December. But 10th December is when we start taking the bookings. And believe me, like all our courses, they get filled up. And they get filled up not because we say they'll get filled up, but because at the end of it, you have the skill. So when you look at all the courses online, they guarantee your money back and they don't guarantee skill. And we don't have a money back guarantee, at least on the live courses, and we guarantee skill. Everyone gets the skill. Everyone is proficient and you'll find out for yourself. That's 10th December and the course starts on 6th of March. The Queenstown workshop, well, that's about is your landing page effective? So you learn step-by-step -step systems of deconstructing and reconstructing your landing page. This is in New Zealand. You haven't visited New Zealand yet. Well, this is your time. It's on the 13th, 14th, and 16th of February. 15th, we go out, we drink, we have fun. So 13th, 14th, and 16th, the prices are going up by another 100% in a couple of weeks, I'm not sure right now, but I can <laughs> tell you it's going up. So that's it from Psychotactics Land. To find out more about New Zealand, go to psychotactics.com slash x2017. We'll see you in 5000 BC. I'm going out and I'm celebrating. Bye for now.